Alright, so I wanted to show how I would teach this class. And so I'd start off with the welcome slide, explain the national holiday and the date. Um, I guess I'll be doing this one on this date actually. Go over classroom expectations like normal. And then I would tell the kids, okay guys, so today we're going to be doing a science experiment and to do so we're going to need to be asking the question. If you've done a lot of science reading and you already know the answer to that question, that's awesome. We're still going to do the experiment and don't give it away to the other kids because we want to find it out from the experiment. So do not spoil the experiment. All right, and then we're going to read the learning targets. And so the main goal of this, guys, is we want to identify if air is matter. To start, to start off about that, does anyone know what is matter? What is matter? So matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So another way of saying that is matter is anything that weighs something and takes up space. Mass is kind of like another way of saying weight. It's a little different, but we'll not talk focus on that today. So, for example, some examples of matter would be your desk, your hand. Everything that is a thing is matter that has mass and takes up space. I weigh something and takes up space. One example of some things that may not, something that may not be matter would be light. Mo many scientists don't think light is matter because we can't see it taking up any space or have any weight. So can you guys think of some other things that would be made up of matter? And then usually kids will say like their desk, their, you know, they they get have a lot of fun naming things. All right, what do you guys think? Now, again, if you know the answer, don't say for sure, but say in the polling tools, what do you think? Is air made up of matter? Yes or no? If you think yes, give me the green check. If you think X, give me the red X. What do you think? Is air made up of a matter? Give the kids a second to answer. All right, well, we're going to use the scientific method to find out. So I'm going to put a link in the chat, and this is where I would give the kids the link to our scientific method form and tell them to fill out their first name and last name while I talk a little about the scientific method, and this is what the form looks like. All right, so do you guys remember when you read the book Mesmerized, Benjamin Franklin used the scientific method to prove Dr. Mesmore wrong. So we're going to use the scientific method to see if we can prove whether or not air is matter. So there's lots of really similar scientific methods. The scientific method is just the process to figure out, uh, come to a conclusion in science. So this is the one we're going to use. Again, all of them are very similar. But the one we're going to use, we're going to start off with a question and then a hypothesis, the material experiment results and conclusion. So who can tell me, what is the question we're trying to learn today? Who remembers from our I can statement? Very good. We want to figure out, is air made of matter? So you can choose that on your scientific method sheet. So at this point, the kids on their scientific method sheet would just click, is air matter? Okay. All right, so what do you guys think? We have here a balloon and a scale. How can we test this using the balloon? What do you guys think? Give them a minute to come up with some ideas. Uh, remind them what matter is. That is anything that has mass and takes up space. And so how can we figure out if air has mass and takes up space? All right, and then our next step is, all right, so what would our hypothesis be? A hypothesis is a educated or smart guess on what we think the answer is. Anytime before you do a science experiment, you want a hypothesis. You can prove if it's true or not. So choose one of these hypotheses. What do you think is the answer? Number one, if the balloon fills with air, then it will get bigger and have more mass, weighs more. Or do you think if the balloon fills with air, then it will not get bigger or not have more mass, and or not have more mass? So what do you think? If you think the air is made up of matter, then you're going to choose hypothesis one. If you think the air is not matter, then you're going to choose hypothesis two. Whatever one you choose, write it on your sheet. 
So at this point, the kids would go to their sheet. And you can also talk about, usually we write hypothesis in an if-then format, because that's a way of saying, hey, we're trying to prove if this is true, then this will happen. If this is true, then this will happen. Um, and they can type out their hypothesis here. And it might take a minute, because they're typing out a whole sentence. But you can go ahead and do this. Since it is taking a minute, you can also use this moment to explain why we're doing the report sheet and how... Uh, when you're doing science, you want to share your results with others. And typing out this report will help us do this. It's also a way to get them ready for middle school and high school when they're going to be doing uh, reports for their lab reports for their science experiments. And I think it's a good thing to do it anyway. Practice their writing. Get those uh, standards in. Alrighty, so next step is we have to say our materials. So let's go and check off the materials on our form. We are using today a balloon and a scale. So you can have them check off balloon and scale. We're not using any of the other things today. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have two parts of our experiment that we're going to do at the same time. The first part is I want you guys to take this balloon and I want you to weigh the balloon. And we're also going to observe the size of the balloon. And so at this point, if you have the scale, I just got mine in the mail the other day. It does weigh the balloon, thankfully, um, even without air. So you'd stick the balloon on the scale, weigh it, put down how much your balloon weighs, ask the kids how much their balloon weighs. Um, if you do not have the scale, you can ask them how they weigh. Otherwise, I've done this experiment before with a balloon that weighed one gram with no air. Okay, and then talk about observing the size of the balloon. Okay. All right, number two. Now we're going to fill up the balloon with air. If you know how to blow up your balloon, you can go ahead and do this now. And then you could blow up your balloon. Kids can blow up their balloon. And then, now what's the size of the balloon? Did the size change? Remember, we didn't do anything to it besides add air. Did the size of the balloon change? Okay, so does the air take up space? Oh, interesting. All right, now let's weigh. Let's see if it weighs any different than when it had no air in it. And so this is kind of the crescendo of the experiment. Usually, like, the kids will get all excited at this point because they know that the size is going to change, but they don't know that the weight is going to change. And so, oh, my goodness, it weighs more, guys. It weighs four grams with air. It only weighed one gram with no air. So, again, those are from when I did this experiment before. Um, and you can do those there. All right, so now let's write down our results on our sheet. Did the balloon get bigger? If so, write it down. If not, write it down. And how much did the balloon weigh before it had air? How much did it weigh after it had air? So what you would do is on the experiment part, they're supposed to just listen. And the results, they would write down it, the balloon got bigger and it weighs, you can do the math of four minus one equals three grams, however you want to do it, or you can just say it weighs more. However you want the kids to do that, you can specify for them. All right, so now we have our results, and now we have to come up with our conclusion, and I realize, there we go. All right, so your conclusion, your results, is just when you say what happened. Okay, your conclusion is when you say, okay, what was the answer to our question? So we set our results. Now what is the answer to our question? Did the air in the balloon take up space? Yes or no? Okay. Did the air in the balloon have mass? Yes or no? Okay. Is air matter? Very good. Yes, the air has mass because it took its place and is matter because it took its place and has mass. Go ahead and check your conclusion off. And so this is where they would check it off on their conclusion sheet. I would say normally with the scientific method sheet, I'll have them write out that whole thing. But just because I know we're limited on time, I made this one a checklist. If you want to edit it so that they have to write it out, that's totally fine too. All right, and so at this point, you know, they're all excited because they figured out that conclusion by doing the experiment. And then if you have time you need to kill, I doubt you will. I have a really good video about, this is a dance from Go Noodle about the scientific method. Uh, it's called Think Like a Scientist. And then this is a really quick song about 
to help kids remember that matters anything that has mass and takes up space is really fun. My kids last two years ago when I taught this loved it. 